So when I first started out, you know, I did a lot of solo jobs. And I kind of developed a bunch of methods for that. You know, today, you know, with employees, we don't send an employee out to climb by themselves. Uh, we send out two people. You know, it's just the way, you know, we're an accredited company. We got to do it that way. Myself, as an owner-operator, I mean, technically, as an owner-operator, I can do, do what I want. Um, and I know by watching Instagram and YouTube, yeah, there's guys going out there and, and doing work themselves. Here's a guy on the side of the road running a chainsaw, no chaps. Uh, no eye protection, no ear protection. <laughs> so, you know, guys are doing it all around. And, you know, they're doing it today. <laughs> and so I thought, well, I'll do a video kind of on some solo techniques. Now, one of the things, if you're out working by yourself as an owner operator, understand that incidents occur when usually two or more things are out of place so if you're working alone and you know I'm not alone the, the homeowner is going to be there watching me he's not going to be under my tree no homeowner helps me do not have the homeowner help you uh, that's a bad recipe but somebody's going to be there I have a tattle tape Site. That's important. Don't don't go out in the woods by yourself, away from everybody. Nobody knows where you are. Uh, that's kind of a fool's game. But you know, you're going up into the tree by yourself. You got to think through everything that you're bringing with you. You got to have your whole plan set up. It just heightens. It elevates the level of everything you're doing to ensure that you have everything in order. And certainly, you're going to want to follow all of the safety standards that we promote uh, because you're already, you don't have someone, you know, to come to your rescue immediately. So you're, you got one strike against you. There's one thing out of order just by working alone. You know, so you've got to be in order on all the other things. If you're taking shortcuts in all your safety practices on a normal basis, and then you're going out and working alone, I mean, that's, that's compounding the odds of something going wrong. And so, you know, I, I've stated it before, I'm a two-hand chainsaw guy. And so, you know, I'm not up there whipping my saw around, waiting to cut my rope. Uh, I'm tied in twice when I'm making a cut. You know, because that's that's what you do. That's the standard. And you start making compromises on those. I've got chainsaw pants on, so I've got my chainsaw protection on. Uh, if I didn't have those, I'd have chaps on. You know, all of your ducks have to be in a row if you're doing a job solo. Because you're it. I mean, I've soloed uh, cabling jobs where I was putting, like, three cables in a tree. I, my record was uh, seven spoke hub hub and spoke you know like so seven cables off of a hub to sever different seven different uh, silver maple leads and I soloed it uh, that was that was a trick <laughs> you know and it was it was typical you know uh, cable you know hard cable not these new soft methods I was hauling that cable around, cutting them to length, and had multiple tools in the tree, uh, and did, did it solo without going up and down, you know, multiple times. So you've got to think through your whole plan. Uh, today we just got like four, I think four or five takedowns. And one of them, two of them at least, are, are just out in the open, it's just going to be some drop cuts. And so those are going to be relatively easy. Uh, two of them are kind of near a pole barn. And so I've got to employ some solo rigging techniques. And I didn't bring the speed line kits along, but I've got some other stuff along. You know, some slings and stuff. So we'll just, uh, and we've got, you know, a tagline. I've got a three strand rope for light rigging. And we'll, uh, We'll get her done, and uh, it'll be fun. So, anyways, just a little 
whole stump speech on working alone. If some CTSP wants to evaluate this video and tell me, you know, you got to take it down, you're not promoting standards. I am not promoting any employee to go out and work, work alone. You know, this is owner operators and they're doing it. And you know, more power to them. I was that guy starting a company once. Probably all the established companies were going, there's this guy doing it by himself. You know, I was that guy. And that's the beauty of arboriculture. It's the last frontier. You can start a company in arboriculture just on true grit. You know, there's something to be said for that. A little bit of freedom to just go out there and get her done. And then I would encourage you, as I did, I mean, I'm a board certified master arborist now, and and we're an accredited company. And, you know, I connected myself to those associations early on and did things right. Always wore chaps, always wore safety protection. Uh, it's, it's how I did it, it's what I did. The only caveat was I did a lot of it by myself. And so I think there's value in a video like this. It's not what we do as a company with employees. Uh, I state that again. And so this is not a compromise of my accreditation. Uh, this is just doing something to help, uh, help other guys that are in a situation where they find themselves by themselves a lot. And it's a, it's a reality in a lot of guys' lives. And I wanna see them do it, do it well get to the point where they have employees working for them and, and they've got a you know they've got that assistance with them so at any rate there's my stump speech and we'll see you at the site Do a bowl in with the Yosemite finish as always. Get up there a little higher. Get this out of that crotch. Get that choked off. Okay, I'm getting double tied in before I make any cuts with the chainsaw. Okay, this is coming out right that way. Happy with that. Good apex. Cut on the back side first. Come on, baby. Go. Never, never a concern. All right, this one goes right there. All right. 
Now for the down climb. I'll bring my rope with me. Get this short enough to, like I say to people, there's nothing wrong with a short trunk. You can send them if you want to, but if you're on the tree, you're on the tree. Yeah, let's let's take it there before we get too tall. We can probably get a single turn here. Land it flat. turn land it flat a little flip with the hand okay this one's a little taller I'm gonna angle it back towards that ash pile somehow I landed on its tip I'd rather have it diving off that way and sliding rather than sliding towards the barn What does that is if you turn your toe in, you pop your spike. If you go pigeon, if you go pigeon toed, you're gonna pop your spikes. And so when I'm leaning like this, my toe came around and it popped my spike out. All right, I'm a little low on this. Cup. On the spar, it's kind of wobbling there. I can probably push it off. You can see that's not very thick. And it's still, still tough. Boom, flat. All right, <clears throat> cracked my rib last week. I can tell you it's talking to me right now. I wasn't climbing trees when I cracked the rib. I was getting out of the car at my daughter's and hit some ice in their driveway. I walked in, I told my son-in-law, well, now I'm gonna have to sue you. <laughs> you know, I'm a fairly aggressive cutter. Oh, not quite. Should've gave it a little push. But I'm stalling this saw out because I, I'm pushing it, I'm not letting it cut. So it's, it's different. A little bit different cutting with these battery saws than with, you know, higher torque gas motor. But you know, these electric motors are going to be advancing. There's going to be some pretty high torque motors coming out, I'm sure. Just look at the torque on a Tesla. Let's see how that comes off of that. Boom. Oh, hit the tip down. A little too tall. Could have made a wider notch if I could get it to flip, but not so. Oh well, we got nice frozen ground. It almost really doesn't matter which way they land today.
right on the end. That's all right. As you can see, the ground is totally frozen. Look at that. Right on the point. GoPro died, I think. Okay. So now it's rigged and hanging. Two to one advantage on that. It's going down on a bite. So you have the friction of that crotch, you have the friction of whatever I use, just my hands in this case. And then you've got you know only half half the weight of the piece on this line. Because you got a, a whole bite down. this off over here give ourselves a little compression force if you remember we got a little you know potentially compromised crotch down here I don't think it really is so now I got a little stub down here I can utilize. And you've got so much friction going on here that you really don't need that much holding. You know, for your, to tie it off. I just take a couple wraps. Now another method that we could employ if, if we had to, if you couldn't, <laughs> say you're down to your last sling and you got three more branches you gotta take off and you don't wanna let another sling go. I could rappel here and just cut all that stuff off. Now most of that is, is drop cuts now that I've brought it over here. So I could pull off three tops and hang them one at a time keep my sling up here and just piece it down and and do that you know one top after another so there's you don't have to rig it all the way to the ground if that's going to be too complicated or or there's too much trash down there I uh, just hang them and then and then take care of them so maybe you can't climb all the way to the top of the tree for some reason you can tip them over and then deal with them from there so all right. I was holding it. And three strand isn't necessarily the best stuff to use for this because it can get twisty. Now another thing you can do if you're out of carabiners I've got a crotch right here by the camera. I could go through that crotch and put the bite through a crotch. <clears throat> yeah, you put a bite through the crotch. I don't need a carabiner on here. I can just go through a crotch, notch this, tip it over, and hang it. And then just lower that limb without a carabiner, just with the rope. 
So there's a lot of little tricks you can employ if you run out of tools, run out of carabiners. But now I'm down to drop cuts, so this rope on my hip, just in case when you're working a tree by yourself, you don't let you don't let any tool go. You keep every rope with you, you keep every sling you got with you. Cut a little low there. All was well, but the butt came back. I just happened to lay it in a place that didn't matter. Okay, make a break cut here. send you guys down but sending the GoPro down on a on a rope is one thing sending it down on a on a rig that might be something altogether different down four trees we had some real-world frustrations with ropes which is your primary hassle with working alone if you if you've got a lot of tree to take down you've got to rig it you've got to retrieve your rope every time you know you run the risk of the, the rig not going the right direction because you got to get it to fall away from the area try to keep your area as clean as possible and you know, I've got I got one snagged in the ropes, so it's just, I had no choice but to go down and you know clean it up, make it right. Um, so there's a lot of hassle. You know, that would that alone could probably talk you into not working alone. <laughs> but uh, there are a couple you know rigging techniques you can use uh, to get things done, and we were able to show you a couple today. So. Hope you enjoyed it. It's a game of trees, and this isn't the way we always do it, but I just thought it might be helpful for some guys out there that might be in the situation where you're getting out there by yourself every once in a while and just find a way to get it done. So, take care. Playing the game of trees